In the previous video, we looked at this process to determine the least squares approximation, that is, some vector x hat that ax hat is as close to the vector b as possible. And we figured that the key trick was this orthogonal projection. I would figure out the b vector hat in orthogonal projection, and I would solve ax hat equal to b hat. What I want to do in this video is try to find a, a different and, in fact, simpler way to go through this basic process. And the key observation is the following thing. If I'm going to begin with my vector b that lives up here, and I conduct an orthogonal projection down here, and I've got a vector which is b vector hat, and, and we know that we can solve this as an ax vector hat. So I have this 90 degree angle between these two different vectors. So what I want to do is, is, is talk about specifically the fact that it was an orthogonal projection means that we've got this 90 degrees. Now, because this was an orthogonal projection, what we know is that if I take the vector b and I subtract off the vector b hat, that difference is this vector that's just going to go up here, then this particular vector, because it points orthogonally away from my subspace, we know that its dot product with everything inside of the subspace is going to be zero. But because my subspace is the span of the columns of A, what I'm in effect saying is that the vector A dotted with AJ, where AJ stands for the jth column of A, that this is equal to zero for all values of J. In other words, that this dot product is equal to zero for every column of A. Or if I want to do this manipulation slightly differently, I can take the same thing, but now I'm going to write down that my B vector hat we know is just going to be equal to A X hat. And this is equal to zero for all J. So what we have here is, is two vectors and we're claiming that their dot product is going to be equal to this scalar zero. And that the eight j's are thought of as all of the columns of A. And we, because of the for all j, we're saying every one of these columns of j. And then because of the for all j here, what we're saying is the dot product of every column of A with this b minus ax thing has to be equal to zero. But every column of A can be the same thing as every row of A transpose. So that's not really doing anything. We're just noting the columns of A and the rows of A transpose are the same thing. So I can think of this as saying that the dot product of this vector with any row of A transpose is going to be equal to zero. But then if I think about how matrix multiplication works, suppose I was to write down an expression like this, A transpose, which is a matrix now, multiplied to a vector B minus AX, had, I'm not doing anything over here, and I'm claiming that, that this is equal to the zero vector. Now, I claim that, that this is an implication, that these things are going to be the same. In fact, it goes both directions. Why? Well, when I do a matrix times a vector, what it is is taking a row of the matrix and, in effect, dotting it with whatever this vector is. So you're taking a row of the matrix, and then you're dotting with the vector. Then you take a different row and you dot with the vector, and a different row and type of the vector, and then you get all this, this whole column of zeros out of it. And because what you're doing is these rows of A transpose, it's the same things as the columns of A, that these are indeed the same thing. And then now we can just do algebra. I'm going to distribute the A transpose through, and I'll move the A transpose B to the other side. And what I'm going to get is that a transpose times A times X vector hat is just going to be the same thing as A transpose times the vector B. And this is my final formula here. It is some system, and I can solve this system for the vector X hat. So I don't have to go through the rigmarole of figuring out the B hat first. I don't have to go and figure that out, which we had previously seen with some projection formula. I can just multiply on the left by A transpose, and then I can go and solve that system. We know how to solve systems, and that's going to give me my X vector hat, my least squares approximation to AX equal to B. 
Finally, I want to note one theoretical point, which is that if the columns of A are linearly independent, it turns out that A transpose times A is an invertible matrix, and that there's a unique solution. So we really like it when the columns of A are linearly independent because then we don't get multiple least squares approximations, we get one least squares approximation.